I've got a new method for washing and drying bees that I would like to show you all. Now I made a video previously um, with a previous protocol and it worked, though myself and a few other people found that it was somewhat inconsistent. Sometimes we got really nice fluffy bee specimens and sometimes their hairs remained matted. Now the reason for that uh, still remains a little bit mysterious, I think. Sometimes that may have done a little bit with the fact that some of these specimens were stored in alcohol for a while, which I think complicates some of the methods. And then also I just think the drying method uh, was not great. And um, adding a step with drying with paper towel or toilet paper, I think is helping that a little bit. So I got my new protocol here. I'm gonna kind of be looking at that to go through it. Uh, but first, um, I want to say that to get the best, most consistent outcomes, it is best to try to wash and dry and pin your bees the day that they are collected. Um, that's a good thing to do anyways, just so you're not forgetting stuff or leaving it behind. Um, but if you do it that day, it makes your life a lot easier. So that's sort of the first recommendation. So the things you'll need you know, we got some specimens. These are uh, still just in soapy water. I collected them with the net earlier today. We got a hair dryer. We got our drying jar, just a mason jar where the top has a screen glued onto it. We got a whirl pack that our bycatch will go in. And um, you could use one of these brine shrimp nets, um, though I think I'm probably just gonna use the lid and um, forceps are handy. This petri dish is gonna help us sort stuff out and we're gonna need another label. I think that is everything. Um, except in some cases you might wanna use a dissecting scope to help you sort out some of your specimens. But the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, pick out all the bees from my batch of specimens here. I'll use my brine shrimp net just to sieve it out, get most of the water out there, and I'll put them down in, uh, you know, it's all covered in suds, so that makes it kind of hard. So I'm gonna rinse the suds off. Um, right here. Stubborn. There we go, that'll make our life easier. So these big petri dishes can be kind of helpful just because they give you a space to look at all your specimens. Now, because I collected these with the net, they're gonna be mostly bees. Um, though I think there's, there's a couple other things in here. There are a couple wasps that I got that I'm pretty sure are wasps, but I'll, I think I'm actually just going to include them um, in this washing process because I haven't looked at them closely and I'm not super positive. So I think these are all bees. Also just going to pick out, there's like some chunks of leaves and flowers and stuff in here. Pick those out. We're doing pretty good. Pick out any other gunk. I think we're we're looking like all oh, so here's something that's not a bee. I got a true bug. Everything else is a bee or a wasp. So we're doing pretty good. Got a true bug and some other little mystery bug here. When using traps, you'll normally end up with more bycatch, but in this case there's not much because I was using a net. But all of that bycatch uh, we want to keep. Those are insects that died and we want to make sure that um, they might be useful to someone in the future. So we use these whirl packs. And I open these by just grabbing uh, these two little tabs on the side and pulling them out. And it'll kind of break the seal here. And I found it can be helpful to do a little blow. Poof it up like that. And importantly, I made a exact duplicate of my uh, specimen label uh, that will go into the bag with the bycatch. Couple notes on writing specimen labels. 
Um, we want to write as legibly as possible, and I suggest that writing in all caps tends to slow us down a little bit and keep our writing a little bit more legible, so you can write in all caps. Also, this specimen label had a surprising number of sevens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sevens. Look at that, seven sevens. Uh, and the reason I mentioned sevens is because that is a number that can cause some confusion because depending on how you write it, it can look like a one or a two. So what uh, I recommend everyone do if they're writing anything for scientific research is to write sevens with a cross, add that cross on it, and that really helps distinguish sevens from ones and twos. So that'll go in there. One other little note for, uh, for netting, I wrote down the time that I started and that I stopped and using 24 hour time, which makes things unambiguous in the future. So I'm gonna put my non-B or wasp bugs in here. And a couple notes about world packs is that bugs tend to like to stick to the sides of these things and end up up at the top instead of down at the bottom. So we wanna make sure, now these have kind of fallen down, that any bug that's in there has fallen down to the bottom. Sometimes you can coax them by swirling them around and uh, just kind of poking to get them down into the alcohol at the bottom. So we want our label and all the specimens down in the alcohol at the bottom. So we have a little bit of 70% alcohol in there. That should be good. So to seal these, we want to make sure we get quite a few turns so that they don't leak. If these are leaking alcohol, that means the alcohol, that there won't be alcohol left in to preserve the specimens and it'll make a big gross mess. So we don't want that. So to make sure they're not leaking, we want to twirl this down at least five turns. This one's going to be many, you know, quite a few more than that because it can go really far down because there's not much in there. So I got plenty of turns and one way you can test that you uh, turned it and sealed it good enough is that it should be airtight so you get a little bit of air pressure in there. Um, you actually want a little bit of pressure because then that kind of helps anything that's in there from getting crushed. You don't necessarily want it like super ballooned out like a you know overfilled water balloon or whatever but a little bit of pressure in there kind of makes sure you know it's airtight and it gives a little bit of resistance from being crushed. Then you take these tabs. Uh, I like to fold them opposite to the way I rolled it down so then you don't lose a turn. If you, um, So turn this back, fold this back and give it a good pinch. This metal tab back, give it a good pinch. And now we're all set. We got our bugs in there. We got a label that can go into our bycatch um, place, wherever that is. So the next step, let me check my protocol. What, what do we do? We made a copy of the specimen label. We sorted out our bees. We put everything in the world pack. Okay, so now we need to go into washing these fellas. So I want to just wash it in, in this jar. So I'm going to take all of the bees and wasps, put them into this jar or any other container with a nice lid. Get them all in there. And as I'm sure you know by now, bees and wasps are all pretty tough. So you can pick them up and they're all good. So we want a bit of soap in there. Maybe someday Don will uh, sponsor our research because we use so much of their soap. A little bit of soap. I'd probably put too much again. And uh, fill this up with some warm water. There we go, nice and warm. About half full. So now we put the lid on and now we got a nice container that we can easily uh, shake around um, to get to break loose all of that pollen and whatever gunk is on them. I did do some little experiments where I had some batches of specimens that I didn't do this washing step 
And when I was looking at them just with my eye, they looked fine. But when I put them under the scope, I could see that they were, they did have a bunch of pollen all caught in their hair and in their legs and stuff, which could uh, definitely make them much harder to identify. So the washing step really is necessary. So we want to maybe put on a timer. Sure, I'll, I'll put on a timer. I got one right here for one minute. Go! And of course, uh, they're tough, so you can shake them quite vigorously. You got this nice lid on here, so you can twirl it around. Whatever does it for you. All right, we made it. That was one minute. So we've got a good wash there. And the next step is to just uh, sieve them out. You could use your brine trip net. Um, actually, I will use that. I'm going to use the brine trip net. Um, so the same net we use in the field when we're sifting stuff out from our traps. That's real sudsy. So, uh, you know, be careful not to lose a specimen and all those suds. I'm going to pour that out. And then just uh, get these nice and rinsed off. Which again, it has taken a little bit of time, but it's getting there. You could uh, use the lid. And actually, the lid might be better in this case because it's got bigger holes. So you get more of the pollen and stuff that would go through it. Okay, nice and rinsed. Now, the next step is to try to get them as dry as we can before we move on to the hair dryer step. And to do that, we use some good old paper towel or toilet paper. I'm just gonna try to shake it. And so we can just, got a wad of toilet paper here. You can just dab, dab them top and bottom, kind of roll them around and get them as dry as we can and get the lid as dry as we can before we move on. Now it's kind of amazing how much water you can get off just with this. Now, of course, their grabby little feet might kind of stick to the paper. So, that's, so be careful of that, that you don't end up you know, accidentally throwing one around or losing one or something. But you can get them pretty dry just by dabbing them with toilet paper to the point that they're dry enough to kind of move freely around. And that will be really important for our next step. So just give it a little bit of time to dry off. And, uh, you know, even if you want to take a break or go watch a YouTube video or um, eat a tube of Pringles or whatever, whatever's on the agenda. You could leave them sit for a little bit to dry off. But the next part is the excitement. Man, there's a wasp in here that is really cool looking. It's fessid, I think. Anyways. So next step is the trademark pending patent pending bee drying vortex and i'm gonna put up a little thing here so we can hopefully see the full vortex in action so we're going to take all of our bees and get them into the bottom of our jar we got a hylaeus in here very cool hylaeus are very waspy looking because they carry their pollen internally they don't have lots of hairs. We do have a few bumblebees in here, which are kind of the uh, you know the best test subjects for a, a drying method because they're the fuzziest. Okay, we'll get their lid on here. We got our hair dryer. Now the bee vortex is a uh, new discovery, and. You could just leave your jar here like this. And we want to take our hair dryer and point it. Uh, I've, I found about three inches away from the top and kind of point it at the, at the edge and then at a bit of an angle. And you get it just right. 
you'll get this swirling of bees around, which I think is just the perfect atmosphere, the perfect setting to get dry bees. So let's see if I can get it to work. It took a little bit of working to get that going, but I'm gonna move this closer and get a closer look at this. So one, you know, little tips about this vortex thing. If, if you point it straight down, it doesn't work. If you're too close, I think it doesn't work. You've got to just kind of move around the angle till you get it going. And you saw with this batch, it wasn't going right away. I think it was just a little wet, uh, but give it a little bit once it dries out and they're not sticking to each other. So far, it's always worked. One other thing you can try, which seems to make the vortex even more powerful, is you can take, this is just, I rolled up a sheet of paper and then cut off some pieces um, that can just kind of absorb some water and give some more kind of sail to the, to the vortex. I don't think it's necessary, but maybe it helps. So the few times I've done this, I've found that with the drying with paper towel and then this kind of vortex, that it only takes maybe like a minute or two of the hair dryer to get them all nice and fluffy. And so the last step is to just pour them out, give them a close look, just inspect each one, see if um, manage to uh, get rid of all the matted hairs. I guess you're not get rid getting rid of the hairs, you're just getting making it so they're not matted. Uh, just check that they're all fluffy it is good to look at the small bees too because they're harder to see their hairs, but we want to get them fluffy as well. I mean, these all look great. I am quite pleased given that I've had somewhat sort of inconsistent results in the past. The few times I've done it this way, they've all looked great. Now, so one downside of using the little pieces of paper is that they're just something for the bees to get caught in. So I wouldn't probably use the the paper um, unless you it's really not working. These are looking good, but I'm gonna give it one little more blast, one more ride on the vortex. Be careful, the uh, lid can get kind of hot, but these look great. And these are now ready to pin. And, and um, if you've uh, followed the suggestion of preparing them the day you collected them, then right after you dry them, they're ready to pin. They don't have alcohol in them, they're all ready to go. So you can get it all done in one day, perfect. That's it.